Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. So the news we're looking at today is Splinterland has announced it is going to be releasing land. So um, I've done another video about the pre-sale. So if you want to know about the pre-sale, um, please look at that other video. Um, in this case, in this video, we're going to look in a bit more detail about why uh, kind of the point of land in terms of the gameplay of Splinterland. So Splinterlands is a is a trading card game. So you basically um, buy cards, you own them um, on the blockchain, you can level them up. And the, the, the higher powered your cards are, the, obviously the better they are when you're playing against other people. Um, is it a head-to-head -head, head get a head -to -head game? Um, and you get rewards for completing missions. You get, if you win battles, you get paid DEC, which is the in-game uh, cryptocurrency, dark energy crystals, which you can then use to buy more cards or, or, or buy cards to level up your existing cards. Um, but, uh, you know, land, land is um, not something necessarily we expected, I think, from Splinterlands, because at the moment the game is just a card-based game. So, you know, could you imagine having having land in Hearthstone, I guess would be um, the, the, the thinking. And, and it doesn't, conceptually, doesn't really make a lot of sense on its own. But um, why um, the team is doing this is um, they are I expanding uh, the game in a way that makes actually makes sense in terms of blockchain. So at the moment... Um, the in, in Splinterlands you have cards, that's the basic uh, mechanic, that's what's held on the blockchain. You also have items that allow you to um, kind of boost your the drop rates when you're opening packs. So you have potions and things like that, um, which you can buy. Um, but, but cards are the only thing you kind of own and can, and can trade. Now having these new things, items and spells. Um, so uh, these will be used. Um, so basically, when you when you're playing a battle in Splinterlands, you you choose um, a summoner, which is kind of like uh, the, the kind of class um, kind of hero, um, and then you choose your monster cards, and there's basically a rule set um, which you choose, um, and then all those cards get laid down in the order you put them in. And but now they're going to add this ability to once the players have chosen their teams, they will see. The teams laid out laid out on the battlefield, um, but before the battle begins, they will have a fixed amount of time and mana to play spells and items. So these these cards, then you can you can play them, and you can basically um, you've you basically done your first strategy by choosing your 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 creatures, your monsters, and your summoner. And then, but now you can choose items and spells to try and you know um, obviously optimize um, your the cards you've chosen, or or or, or try and um, Kind of nullify some of the uh, advantages that you that you think the the uh, opponent has. Um, so this will will uh, create a huge huge increase of uh, of element of, of huge element of skill, um, and it's obviously time based. So you have to do this kind of stuff quickly. Um, but this is the important thing: these new item and spell cards will not be available um, to buy in these packs. Instead, they will be minted by players using resources and buildings. Um, that are harvested or built on their land. So the, the point of having land is it will be the way that you create these new um, cards, items and spell cards. So not only you know, the point of owning land is, is you're going to get access to um, create these item and spell cards, which then you can then trade. Um, and then that plays in obviously to um, how well you're going to do in the game. And if you don't have land, then you're only going to be able to uh, buy these uh, cards on the marketplace. If you do have land, then obviously you're getting the ability to 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 sell them. Um, so it's a way of um, kind of creating passive income in, in a sense. We're seeing that quite a lot with land sales now, where there's people, are, developers are thinking of ways of um, rewarding people who own land with with some extra, whether that's in-game items in this case, or whether that's cryptocurrency. And um, we're seeing that as well. So um, the smallest uh, unit of land is a plot. Um, and there are going to be different sorts of uh, of plot, 14, 14 different ones. Okay, that's quite a lot. <laughs> so, um, and that obviously links into what they will um, produce. And they will be um, natural, magical, or occupied. Um, so, uh, natural lands means they can contain the natural resources, uh, which can be harvested uh, and required to build, upgrade, and maintain the buildings. So, once you have a building there, obviously, like, like in real life, you have to maintain it. Magical lands um, will uh, be involved with one sort of splinter. So this, why it's called splinter lands is basically there are these classes: um, life, death, earth, 
fire, water, and dragon, kind of elemental ones. Um, and uh, these components will be required to mint item and spell cards, um, and some uh, lands will ha already have monsters on. So you can get the uh, need the essences, get the essences from the monsters in order to um, mint your spell cards. So this, the minting is quite complex. So you have these, you know, these two different sorts of um, material, and also um, it looks like we might need some buildings as well to do that. Um, and each plot of land will have um, common, rare, epic, or legendary as well. Um, and we're getting into more and more detail here. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go into all this detail, but we can see here um, there's some buildings, lots of different types of buildings. So there'll be um, some harvesting, refining, storage, um, and the uh, important um, items and spell manufacturing. Um, some, oh, that's it. Most buildings will require some cards to work. Um, so, so that's a way of retaining, uh, getting people to retain cards. You're going to want some of these cards because um, you're going to need to effectively kind of almost like stake them I suppose um, and some monsters and cards are going to be better um, at doing certain things than others so again that's good that's forcing people back to the marketplace to buy up these cards so the point of having land isn't isn't is, is to provide a lot of new features but also it kind of re reinforces the um, the ecosystem that's already in the game um, and basically the land makes everything even the, the lowest common cards become more valuable because because they now have new new utility um, businesses, uh, buildings can be destroyed, and also we have these key buildings, the castle and the keep, um, which you don't build. They they just kind of come on certain plots of land. Cannot be they are permanent, um, and they will confer special um, benefits. Um, doesn't actually say what they are. Oh, we also got magical items, totems. So there's <laughs> quite a lot going in here. Um, totems are only only available as prizes in a raffle, um, and uh, the raffle is is um, you get. How you get tickets for the raffle um, is through the pre-sale. Okay, so a lot going on here. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, and I think it does go go to show um, that a lot of these blockchain games we are seeing that they even something like Spinflads, which is a fairly well-rounded product, um, you know, is looking to what can I what can we do to to you know get more players in to to engage our current player base in in, in a stronger manner, and uh, you know we're starting to see I guess some of the the game design primitives that, are, that the people are expecting. They have NFTs, characters, um, uh, we're expecting to see land. Um, as I say, most, most blockchain games are now looking at how can they can implement land, because land is something that feels permanent. It really engages players. It really retains them in, in the system. If you've got land, why would you stop playing the game? You know, you've got something that, that is valuable. You've got something that potentially is, is creating value for you. Um, and these are the sort of things we expect to see blockchain games uh, doing over the next uh, few years. So, so uh, good work from Splinterlands. Obviously, this is a design doc, so so they've um, there's no time frame for when this is going to happen. The the pre-sale for land will happen um, in November and December. Um, but but that's in a sense creating funding for the, for the, for this to happen. So so we don't necessarily expect this to, to be um, happening in early 2021. I expect this. You know, I guess we, we see certain levels of the land being produced, um, like we've seen with Axie Infinity, they have the land and then slowly they build up functionality on that land um, as as they do the testing. Um, blockchain games are difficult, <laughs> they really are. And obviously, the more features you add, the, the more complex it all becomes. Um, but uh, yeah. anyway, it's good to see um, good to see innovation. This is what we want to see. We want to see blockchain games getting deeper and kind of becoming a different sort of game um, from what we've seen before. We've seen kind of quite a lot of, of simple games. We've seen quite a lot of attempts to um, copy existing kind of game designs, which is all fine. You know, that's all the learning experience. Um, but but we want to also see innovation. So so that's good to see from Splinterlands. Thanks for uh, watching the video. This is Blockchain uh, Gaming World. I'm trying to make sense of blockchain gaming um, please do subscribe to the channel if that's the sort of thing you're interested in but thanks for listening to this video and hope to see you again soon